Hi, I'm Karen at Dark Moon Emporium, and today I've been exploring objects and layers in Xtool Creative Space version 2. We've got a couple of ways of getting shapes onto our canvas. So over here on this icon, I have my basic shapes. I have my line, my rectangle and my circle. If I click on line, that kind of does what it says on the tin. Click and drag and let go when my line is long enough. Um, if I want the line to be at a different angle, I can do that. If I want my line to be perfectly horizontal or vertical, all I will do is hold down the shift key as I'm drawing my line and it is constrained to either vertical or horizontal. Let me get rid of all of those. As you can see, the icon has changed to the last object I used. So rectangle. I can place a rectangle anywhere on my canvas. If I hold down the shift key, I'm constrained to a perfect square. And finally, circle. So again, hold down the shift key if I want a perfect circle and don't let go of it until I've let go of the, uh, the mouse. Because if I don't, it will turn into an ellipse. So undo those. So those are the basic shapes, and those are the shapes that were available, uh, as far as I can tell, in the very first version of XCS. Yeah, we only had those three shapes. So then with updates, uh, Xtool added the shape menu. And here I have a choice of all sorts of shapes. Uh, I've got borders, plants, animals, patterns, parts, other. I've just got some it's in other. Let's have a look. Some interesting icons in other that you can explore at your leisure. Uh, today I'm going to use the basic shape. So I'm going to bring in a hexagon. Let me click back out of that. And as you will see, it has placed it in the middle of my canvas. Uh, no um, options about how big it is but I can change the size either by dragging on the handles and by default the aspect ratio is locked okay so it's going to keep its aspect ratio no matter what I uh, what I do if I want to release that I just click on that icon here and now I can play about with the shape and size. If I want a more exact control, I can enter whatever figure I like into the uh, these little boxes over here. And that's uh, and that will alter my my shape. okay and I can place it centrally on my canvas and if I like I can also set the exact position using the coordinates in these boxes over here. Let's add in my hexagon again and this time I'm going to bring in a star as well. So these have both come in uh, with the default parameters of score and they've come in on the same layer. They're both on the blue layer. Uh, I'm going to change them to engrave and I'm going to put the star onto a different layer from the hexagon. So I just right click and here I've got a number of options. Um, move to is one of them, so I'm going to move it to the red layer. And now down in this corner here, I have um, I have a red layer and a blue layer. And if I click on this icon, 
I have my layer menu and I can lock the, the shape so if I lock my uh, if I lock my red shape I can't do anything with it now if I unlock it I can move it around that is something that uh, X tool users have been asking for for a very long time and I'm very very pleased that we now have it uh, I can also lock and unlock Let me clear away my layers menu I can also lock and unlock with my uh, with my right mouse click okay so I can do I can do those things here and I can show or hide. So if I click on show or hide, it's still there. If I go to my layers menu, it's still there. It's just not visible. Let me turn that back on. By default, Xtool places the objects that you create on the same layer as the last object you created, um, but it places it in front of that object. So. I can show you this by creating another shape. So let's have a nice heart this time. And as you can see, it's come in onto the red layer. It's come in by default is score. So let's make it engrave. And let's put it onto another layer so we can see it. Okay, so that heart is now the top object. If I want to move it, Let's say I want the star to be in front. So let me click on the star. And over here, I have the arrange menu. So if I click on that, I can bring the star to the front. I can send it to the back. So now it's behind everything. I can bring it forward so now it's behind the heart but in front of the, the rectangle and let me send the heart backward. Sometimes the order in which you have your objects can make a difference. If you're using, for example, the um, some of the combine functions. So here I've got my blue hexagon and my red star. Uh, if I select both of them and I hit my unite function, then that is the shape I get. And Xtool has put them both onto the blue layer, which was the which was the layer at the back. If I go to these two and I combine those, again, the shape is the same, but X tool has placed them again on the layer that was on the back. And so here again, same two shapes. Now this time I'm going to subtract, don't want all of them, just want that one and that one, okay? So the red star is on top, and when I subtract, it takes the star shape away from the hexagon. If I have it the other way around, so that the hexagon is on front, and I subtract, it takes the hexagon away from the star. So that can make a difference to what you're doing. So the other functions, are united overlap and I'm left with that shape and again it's the same shape it's just placed it on a different layer okay and last function is subtracted overlap and this time it's taken out the bit that uh, uh, the bit where they overlap 
because that's what it said it was going to do. It was going to subtract it over that. And, and again, it places the object uh, on the, the layer that was at the back. So something else that I can do with the shapes, I select them both. Over here, I have an alignment menu, so I can uh, align them both to the left and do that. I can align them both to the right. I can align it to the top and the bottom. I can align horizontal align center and I can vertical align center and if I do both horizontal and vertical then I can stack them on top of one another. So if I bring in a third shape and I align them to a vertical align center over here I have my distribute menu and I can distribute them horizontally so there's an even space between them and let's this time do the horizontal align center and distribute vertically and again even space between them so I've got my group of objects pretty much centered on screen um, and I can move them around and place them where I want to just by sort of eyeballing it. However, if I want to be a bit more precise in my placement, then I can use the coordinates menu. Um, so if I set my X coordinate to zero, then that aligns my group with the left hand side of the canvas. And if I also make Y zero, then it aligns with the top of the canvas. So that means that if I want to place my uh, object at, let's say, uh, 30 millimeters on the X axis, and let's make it 25 millimeters on the Y axis, then I can do that simply by edit, putting in the numbers. The other thing that I can do over here is that uh, I can adjust the size, uh, which I've probably mentioned before, but it's worth saying again. And I can resize it just by dragging the corners. And if I want to distort it, I can unlock the aspect ratio and that will allow me to, to stretch things out. But uh, let's go back to where we were. Um, and another thing that I can do is that I can adjust the angle. Now, of course, I can rotate my uh, group just by uh, just by clicking on the, the little rotate tool up there at the top there. However, if I want it to be precisely, um, let's say, 30 degrees, then I can enter that in. Um, let's make it 45 and 180. I can select a layer by clicking on its color button at the bottom of the screen. And I can reorder objects by moving them in the object list. So if I move my orange heart to the top, come here, come on, come on. There we go. And now my blue hexagon is at the back. So let's move that to in between the heart and the star. And I can just play with my objects until I have them in the order that I want them. Back with my group of three objects. I'm going to select all of them. 
I'm going to right mouse click and I'm going to group them because the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use the outline function. So again, it defaults to an offset distance of two millimeters and it defaults to putting them on the uh, the last layer that you created, which in this case was the orange layer. And I'm going to leave it with the defaults for now. I can change the offset uh, here so I can make it bigger. So having said, I'm going to keep it. I'm just going to make it bigger, make it smaller, and I can place an internal offset by using a negative number. So if I make that negative two, then you can just see up here on the blue shape that I now have an inner outline. I'm going to go back to the default and I'm going to enter that and OK. You have to hit enter if you change if, if you change the size. OK, so there is my outline. If I move that again to a different layer so we can see it and if I make it engrave so we can see it clearly now you can see that that is on top of all the other shapes that I made uh, let's say I want to make that shape a frame I want to take out the the shapes that were in the middle well what am I going to do well I'm going to go to uh, send to back and now it's behind uh, my my group I'm going to make sure I've got everything selected and I'm going to go to subtract and that has taken away my shapes and left me with the outline so at the moment I'm just working on one canvas if I wanted to add an, another canvas to my project because I wanted to um, store some items that I wanted to, let's say, cut and paste into my, uh, into my project, then I simply come up here to the Canvas tab, click on it, and that opens uh, the Canvas workspace. To add a canvas, I just click on the Add button, and now I've created Canvas 2. I can rename my canvas just by clicking on the three dots. Um, what shall I call it? Uh, let's call it extra. I can call it anything I like actually. Um, and if I decide that actually I don't want it after all, again the three dots and I can just delete it. It gives me a warning to say, do you really want to uh, delete this canvas? Yes, I really do, because I haven't got anything on it. So I'm just going to OK that, and now I'm back to one canvas. And I can collapse the workspace just by clicking on at that tab up there. And that is where I am going to leave it for today. Uh, that was quite a long video, and uh, I'm very, very grateful that you've stayed with me up until this point. Next time, I'm going to take a look at text effects. So if you want to join me for that, I'd be very pleased to see you. But for now, once again, thank you very much for joining me, and I hope I'll see you again sometime soon. Bye-bye.